June 44, when I was in the Normandy, I was about 18, 19 years old. And now, today, I am 94. My name is George Champa. I'm 93, I'll be 94 in a couple of weeks. I was in the 607th Graves Registration Company on D-Day in 1944. In Waldo had we ein, ein, ein Juden, Mendelssohn, der hatte ein Geschäft, Lebensmittel und Stoff und so weiter. Mit dem war mein Vater gut befreundet. Wir mussten ja, wenn wir ihn grüßen, mussten wir Heil Hitler grüßen. Dann sagte er, wenn ihr da hinkommt, sagt er nicht Heil Hitler, sondern guten Tag. Und der ist, ich glaube, der Vater wusste dann doch ein bisschen mehr. Der hat dann zu dem Mendelssohn gesagt, hier, hau ab. Mein Vater war kein, kein Nazi. Und mit 14 Jahren, als die, die nach Polen marschiert sind, da habe ich gedacht, hier, wenn ich 19 bin und so, und dann das ich zur Wehrmacht gehen muss, hoffentlich ist bis dahin der Krieg aus. When I turned 18, I got drafted. You know, I was very young. I had never been uh, on any kind of a trip before. It was a lonesome feeling, you know, leaving the shore. All of a sudden, you're out, getting out there in the ocean, getting further and further away from home. We knew where we were going. Invasion day on the English Channel. Allied fighting men equipped with all types of firepower, with tanks, trucks, and bulldozers, board landing craft for the long-anticipated assault on Fortress Europe. We're uh, anchored broadside to shore, and the German artillery is constantly firing. You can see ships getting hit. We didn't know if we were going to get hit, so everybody got on the side of the ship opposite the shore waiting for our turn to go down the rope ladders. I can't tell you now how long we waited. All I know is I had to get down into a LCI landing craft. And then from there, we started heading into the shore. And you're seeing guys getting hit, you're seeing bodies. I was scared to death. Tell you the truth, I, I blacked out for, for a little while. I, I didn't know which way it was up. Half of our guys went in at Omaha, and half went in at Utah. I was at Utah Beach. See, Omaha is where most of the shelling was coming from. These guys were dug in, and, and they were, our Air Force could, couldn't even get them because they were entrenched, and they were in machine gun nests up above the cliff in Omaha. They were shooting at guys like ducks. Da mussten wir uns fertig machen zum Abmarsch nach Richtung St. Mary Glees. Einmal war es eine Gruppe Heavy Machine Guns. Ja, four men. The first and the second man, they shot. And the third and the fourth man carried their ammunition boxes. I was a, a number of four. Da habe ich die amerikanischen Verwundeten gesehen. Die deutschen Verwundeten habe ich an für sich nicht gesehen. Die habe ich nur gehört, wie sie geschrien haben. Kamerad, helf mir. Da merkte ich von wegen Heldentod. Keiner will Heldentod sterben. Das sind alles junge Leute, die wollen leben. You know, our government didn't want bodies lying around for other troops coming in to see that. And so we gathered them as quickly as we could. We had 17 temporary cemeteries throughout France, Belgium, and Germany. We gathered approximately 75,000 dead soldiers, that's American and German, because the Germans didn't pick up their dead, we did. We buried them in a separate cemetery, and uh, we just had markers over the graves. One dog tag left on the body, one tacked to the marker. That was our job. You're working like a robot. You're seeing 18, 19, 20-year-old guys getting killed. You remember something like that. You remember when you see the guts of a soldier I mean, I, I couldn't look at their faces, you know. It's just, we handled bodies in unimaginable uh, conditions throughout those 11 months, not just at Normandy. Nazi prisoners are taken by the thousands. They thought their Atlantic wall was invulnerable. The Nazis fight stubbornly and bitterly, but they were outgeneraled and outgunned in the landings on the beaches, and many surrendered. We had us taken and we were also gathered in one city. We were there to foot. Richtung Lothar Beach, wo sie gelandet sind, die Amerikaner. Als wir da runterkamen und auf die Landungsboote, 
die habe ich gesehen, wie viele tausende Schiffs, diese Masse an, so was wie wollen die dagegen was machen. We had German prisoners digging graves for 11 months all the way through, and they thought they were digging their own graves. I, you know, I had my carbine rifle. I remember standing over this one guy, and I, I said, Nix, Nix, Arbeiten, Nix, Essen. I mean, you don't work, you don't eat. And they'd say, you know, me no Nazi, me Polsky, me Czech, or whatever. And, and a lot of that was true. It wasn't long before a liberated Paris was hailing the heroes. The courage and heroism of the D-Day invasion were the omens of the inevitable final victory. I've seen every permanent cemetery over there except one. And I can walk through a cemetery without breaking down. I walked around wondering that, that I handled this particular body. When I saw that cemetery 50 years later with my kids, and I'm walking through those crosses at Stars of David, and I see no date of birth. People walking through there now have no idea of the age of these guys. I looked at my kids and I said, you know, you don't know this, I know it. Many of these guys were 18, 19, and 20, younger than what you are now because they were like 21 and 22. My kids uh, looked at me when we were on that bus and uh, Michael said to me, Dad, uh, you never told us anything about it. And I said, yeah, I know Michael. I didn't talk about it. Ich finde, diese Geschichten sollten doch weiter erzählt werden. Diese jungen Leute, die das ja nicht erlebt haben, die sollen leben, dass, dass wir durch die geglückte Invasion 70 Jahre Frieden bekommen haben. Das, ist dann, das sollen sie immer wieder bewahren. Wir haben immer gesagt, bewahrt die, die, die Demokratie, die wir durch, dadurch bekommen haben. <lacht>